Hey guys, welcome to my garden. Now that it's fall, some things are starting to slow down in the garden, but there's still some things that are growing really well right now and some cool things that are happening that I can't wait to show you guys. Can you believe that just two years ago, this area behind me looked like this? I ripped up that pool, got it out of here, brought in some good organic soil and compost, and just been working this area for two years now and it's just becoming better and better every year in this video i'm going to walk you through what's working for me this year and some of the things that i'm going to change for next growing season let's check it out guys start the garden tour on my strawberry patches while they're growing well and getting established, I'm having problems with the squirrels and chipmunks getting in and stealing my strawberries. Actually surprised they haven't gotten this one yet. It's been a while since we picked strawberries and it's kind of disappointing. I'm gonna have to rethink my cage here that I put around it because it does not keep chipmunks out at all. But the cool thing that I'm really excited about is before I built these beds, I inoculated these wood chips with wine cap strafaria and the mushrooms, now that it's fall, are popping up everywhere. As you can see, you got a little guy popping up right here. A ton of them popping up back here by my asparagus and I harvested some right out of the strawberry beds yesterday. So I've been picking away at these over the past few days and eating them up. So cool. I love growing mushrooms and I've been waiting all season for those guys to pop up. All I'll have to do is put fresh wood chips or some fresh straw down every year to continue feeding that mycelium and they should come back, no problem. So cool. The beds in the front, they got eaten up by either a deer or a uh, woodchuck. I'm gonna have to rethink what I'm gonna do with this next year and put up something to critter proof it. I might be doing something like a caterpillar tunnel on these strawberries instead and see how that works. All right, let's go in the garden. So my Brussels sprouts were planted too closely earlier in the season and I dug them up and transplanted them into some pots. And I wasn't that confident that they were gonna survive the transplant, but they did and recovered well. But I made the mistake of leaving them outside of the fence and something chewed on them, chewed them up. I'm hoping they recover. I still see some Brussels sprouts on here, but I don't have high hopes for these guys. They got, they got destroyed. So lesson learned can't grow Brussels sprouts outside of the fence. Fig tree, we call him Figaro. He's looking great. Nice and established in his new home. He's a Chicago hardy fig and he should do just fine over the winter. We're probably gonna wrap him and so he stays nice and cozy. In the first bed, we still got lots of bok choy growing. A little more than we knew what to do with. And the bugs are getting to them, but we've still been enjoying so much of it this year. The Swiss chard, so colorful and so big, did really well for us this season. And the kale, kale is staying strong and it's pretty frost tolerant. So the kale should stay with us and keep growing and up until winter, I'm hoping. So there's some stuff in this garden that's just gonna keep going. And then there's stuff that I'm gonna have to rip up pretty soon squash we've harvested a lot of cool squash so far this season but these plants are looking like they're about to be done i have one more butternut squash over here that is almost ready to be harvested something looks like it took a bite out of it but it shouldn't it should be fine it should be able to just cut that right off all right this, next we got our fall crop of sugar snap peas looking great looking established 
and starting to flower. So I think we're gonna get a nice crop of these very soon. Moving on, we have some more peas down here. They're starting to slowly plump up a little bit and harvesting these already. Got some more bok choy here and a lot of arugula that needs to be harvested. After the arugula, we have some lettuce and some string beans that are starting to, I saw some yesterday when I was walking around, we're starting to get a little bit of string beans here. We've been harvesting a lot of string beans off of the pole beans, but not so much off these bush beans, but they're starting to fruit now and they're looking great. Carrots have been great. We've been digging those up and still have a lot left in the ground to dig up. Right. Next we have a pepper plant. This guy right here has got a lot of little baby peppers. They need to start turning red. Like this guy right here, but the ones they turn red, they're really sweet and delicious. All right, moving on to the next style. I've been cutting back a lot of my zinnias. They've been taken over and they got so big. I mean, they're like over six feet tall and so beautiful, but they, they tend to uh, spread out a lot more than I realized. And you got to cut these back and keep them under control. Definitely going to grow these again next year, but we're going to uh, do a little more with trellising and keeping them from getting into the aisles. But I want to leave them up as long as I can because they're still attracting pollinators. We want to try to keep as many coming around as possible. All right, my last zucchini plant. Still trying to give me some zucchinis here. So we're hopeful that we'll get a couple last zucchinis before the end of the season. This area right here gets a little messy because I had sweet potatoes and acorn squash both growing in the same area. And they sort of uh, got mixed in all together, but doesn't seem to have made a difference. These acorn squash, they look pretty great. And we'll see what happens when I start digging up some sweet potatoes before winter comes. Wow, check out these eggplants here. They're looking great. Gonna have to harvest a bunch of these today. I'm really liking these Japanese style eggplants. They're great sauteed with a little garlic and onion. Got another Japanese eggplant right here. And this is where a lot of the sweet potatoes are gonna be established. These uh, salvia flowers are pretty too. We're gonna have to do a little better job with uh, trellising and keeping them standing up next year because they got kind of tall and thin and the wind just blows them over. All right, pole beans. Earlier in the season, I was discouraged about uh, these plants. I think I planted too many of them. I had them growing on both sides of this trellis and I wasn't getting any beans. I was so uh, disappointed, but now I'm getting so many, like we picked a ton yesterday and now I gotta get back out here and pick a bunch more today. So good. Definitely one of the things I enjoy growing the most in the garden picking these fresh beans and having them with some hummus or sauteing them up. So good, even on their own. This trellising works well, but you don't need a ton of plants. And I overplanted them earlier in the season. Next year, I'm just gonna plant maybe like five, six plants and let it do what it wants to do. All right, moving on to my tomatoes. They're sort of dying down. At this point, the tomatoes are, you know, struggling a little bit there. They've given me so much already this season that I have no complaints. Um, gonna rethink the trellising for next year and definitely gonna grow a lot less plants. I had 16 total plants this year and it was way more than I needed. Definitely fed a lot of friends and neighbors and a lot of squirrels tomatoes this year. They, I was surprised what a problem squirrels can be with tomatoes, but luckily for me, I had more 
than I know what to do with anyway, so it didn't really upset me that much. But yeah, every day the squirrels were running away with a few tomatoes. So I had to try to use stuff like this hawk here. And I bought this solar noise maker, uh, motion sensor noise maker. And what a piece of junk, it doesn't work. It doesn't scare anything away. It's supposed to keep animals out of here. I still got groundhogs trying to break in constantly. And if they get in, this, does not, this doesn't scare them at all. The chipmunks, it doesn't scare the chipmunks, doesn't scare the squirrels. Um, probably just gonna, you know, get rid of this thing completely and not even use it next year. I might try a motion sensor that sprays water, but we'll see. But I'm very disappointed in that. As for the varieties of tomatoes that I was happiest with this year, I'd say I was happiest with these plum tomatoes and the cherry tomatoes. They provided me with so much and they're still providing me tomatoes. So I think next year I might not bother with the determinate variety that I grew back there. They were okay, but had some issues. I like the uh, indeterminate varieties of the plum and cherry the most right now. All right, moving along. But yeah, these tomatoes are definitely nearing the end of their life and gonna ha be harvesting a lot of these over the next week and then probably start ripping them up. All right, moving along. We got our Brussels sprout plants. I made the mistake of planting six plants in this one small area over here and they're too close. So I dug three of them up I transplanted one of them here and two in the pots and they're doing well. They started to recover, but something's been getting at them. I think either a groundhog got in here one time and chewed them up. Either that or the squirrels have been picking some of the Brussels sprouts off of them. And it's just disappointing because you know, been what, watching these things grow for the past three months you know over a hundred days in here taking care of them feeding them pruning them and then all of a sudden something comes along and starts picking all the brussels sprouts off of them it's pretty disappointing all right next we have some more of these peas this guy looks good here when they get nice and fat like that that's when you want to harvest them some more kale that I was trying to let get established before it gets too cold. It looks like something's been eating these. I don't know. Hard to tell. Things have been getting in here and doing some damage. And then we have some more shard and some mustard greens right here. Got some cool watermelons this year. They're delicious. This guy's ready to pick tell when the stem is dried out like that so we're gonna pick this guy today um, you know they're they're good tasting watermelons they just have a lot of seeds and next year I think I'm gonna to try to grow a seedless variety but it was fun fun growing watermelons for my first time and they are tasty they are nice and sweet it's just uh you got to work your way around the seeds with this variety and I'm not that into that all right, well, this trellis thing right here is where I was growing my cucumbers. And the cucumbers proved to be too heavy for this trellis thing. But so when I ripped them up, I said, you know, I'm just going to grow some something a little lighter on this trellis thing and planted some more sugar snap peas. So I have a feeling we're going to be rolling in sugar snap peas very, very soon between this area here and plus that area over that way. All right, and now the peppers were late to the party, but man, I have so many peppers now. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna have to stuff these, cut them up and saute them. 
with some vegan sausage and onions. Or we just cut them up and eat them raw. This variety right here is pretty prolific. I mean, they're just growing these big, they're called thunderbolts. And they're just growing some monsters. And they're supposed to turn red. They haven't done much of that, but I've been okay with it because I'm just picking them green and eating them that way. These little guys have been turning red these lunchbox varieties and we have a ton of those as well these are great for just snacking on straight up I really like this variety and i really like the thunderbolt two varieties that i plan on growing again next year for sure so cool and we're gonna have a ton of these for the i'm gonna have more more of these than i know what to do with all right Moving along, we have some celery that I wasn't that impressed with and some zinnias that are sort of past their prime. All right, moving along to that last row where we have some awesome mushrooms popping up by the asparagus. These are called wine cap strafaria. And I like them when they get a little bigger, like that size. You could pick them and eat them at this smaller stage as well, but I'm gonna let them get to about that size and then I'm gonna harvest them. So cool. The asparagus is still getting established. I just planted it this year and it takes a couple years to get established. So you wanna let it bush out like this. And then after the first frost, it's gonna start to die. And that's when we're gonna start pruning it back and then we'll let it do it one more time next year. After that, we're not gonna let it bush out at all anymore. We're just gonna harvest the asparagus as they come up. And it's gonna be awesome. All right, I'm gonna try to step over here without stepping on any mushrooms. This area here has been a trouble spot for me with the groundhog. That's why I've been lining up logs and putting a lot of stones down gonna be rethinking this over the off season figure out some more ways to keep out the uh, groundhogs because when they get in they do a lot of damage it's one guy's pretty big pretty fat and he can eat a lot when he gets in all right next moving on to my raspberries they uh, they're getting established pretty well here and we've been getting some nice golden berries so far these guys over here have been delicious. Next year, they'll be more established and we'll get a lot more. But even, even these raspberries, I've been seeing the squirrels coming after them and it's very frustrating when you, you're looking at some raspberries and saying, ah, oh, that one looks like it's about ready to pick. I'll let it go to tomorrow. And then you come out and it's gone. It's pretty frustrating. I'm about to give up when the squirrels and just start feeding them I'm leaving a plate out for them every night maybe they'll leave my garden alone and then next we have some more asparagus that I planted next to my blackberry bushes and then we have the blackberries these are thornless variety getting huge but I'm not really seeing any berries yet but some of these vines i mean they must be like 10 feet long so i'm definitely gonna have to rethink this trellising for this area probably rip up all these posts and put in some new straighter stuff and put some better string up for next season because i want to keep the stuff out of the walkways a lot better next season but so cool you know a lot of this stuff is all things that I've grown for the first time and what a learning experience like I said there used to be a pool right here and now it's a thriving garden all right guys I hope you enjoyed that garden tour I really enjoy showing off the progress I've made in this garden over the past couple of years because like I said there used to be a pool behind me here 
nothing. It was sand. Brought in some good dirt and have been working the soil. We got some magic happening back here. And I can't wait till next season. It's just gonna keep getting better and better. I'm gonna keep expanding it out and just keep making some little tweaks. Growing some things that did really well for me. Growing a little less of some things that I had more than I knew what to do with. Start a garden. If all you have is a basement or a spare room, start a grow room and start growing your own vegetables. I have lots of videos to show you how to grow, not just outdoors, but also indoors as well. Grow some mushrooms, grow some vegetables, grow your own food, guys. It's the best way to go. Have a great day and stay healthy.